and repeating that performance. Ohio State gets its eighth verbal commitment today. This one from Dublin Scioto's Greg Simpson, who leads all Central Ohio rushers with more than 1,200 yards and 22 touchdowns in just six games this season. But Simpson, whose last-minute interception against Akron Buchtel sealed Dublin State Championship last year, will probably play defensive back in college. The 6'1", 205-pounder has 29 tackles, including two sacks for the Irish this season. And Greg, well, he says he'll play anywhere the Buckeyes want him to play. I want to play early, you know, I just, I'm going to have to earn that, but I definitely want to play early and break up in the lineup. I don't care, if, you know, if it's a special team when I walk in there, it's a special team. If it's offense, it's offense, defense, defense. Coaches love to hear that. Simpson's future teammates will play host to Wisconsin this Saturday in OSU's homecoming game. And if you're worried about overconfidence or complacency after the second-ranked Buckeyes knocked off back-to-back -to -back top five opponents, well, cornerback Sean Spring says the guys need only to look back to last season to guard against that. We just stay in focus one game at a time. We've been preaching that uh, all year long about just one game at a time and not overlooking anyone and uh, not looking too far down the road, to maybe towards Michigan or towards the Rose Bowl, because you know what happened last year. We went 11-0 and we lost the last two games of the year. Hmm. We do know what happened last year. Eddie George knows, too, and the former Buckeye is taking it out uh, on NFL defenders this year. Last year's Heisman Trophy winner is the AFC Rookie of the Month after running for 466 yards in the Oilers' first five games this season. Rain postponed game one of the American League Championship Series tonight in New York. The Yankees and the Orioles will try again tomorrow afternoon at 4. Game two will be played Thursday, which had been scheduled as an off day. Of course, you can catch the entire ALCS right here on NBC4. And stay tuned after tomorrow's game for a special hour-long edition of News 4. Baseball's first postseason honors handed out today, and not surprisingly, the Indians were well represented. Jim Tomey wins the American League Silver Slugger Award for third baseman. Tomey batted 311 with 38 home runs this season. Albert Bell also takes home one of the three outfielder Silver Slugger trophies after he hit 311 with 48 homers. And a couple of Indians recognized for their fielding. No surprise here, center fielder Kenny Lofton picks up his fourth straight gold glove. You know, Lofton has won a gold glove in four of his five seasons in the major leagues. Omar Vizquel also collected his fourth straight gold glove award at shortstop. To the ice tonight, the Penguins and the Whalers in Hartford. Third period, Jeff Sanderson beats Tom Barrasso. One of two goals for Sanderson. The Whale wins 7-3. Hartford goes to 2-0. The Penguins open the season 0-2. Finally, grab some aspirin for the up-close-and-personal Plays of the Week. Ready or not, here come the Plays of the Week. Watch this. It's just a chin shot. Boom. 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 Well, now that we have your attention, let's check out the game winner of the week. Denison trails Earlham 20 to 19 with 56 seconds left in the game. Earlham at the Denison 12 looking to put the game away, but Denison linebackers Brandon Scaff and Bart Branham force a fumble in the Earlham backfield. Strong safety Scott Winters picks up the loose ball, gets a nice block from cornerback Brian Nicholas and says, see you later. Scott Winters returns it 80 yards for the go-ahead score. Denison battles back from a 20 to 6 fourth quarter deficit to win it 27 to 20. The not game winning play of the week. Mississippi with the old muddle huddle on the kickoff return. Sometimes this works for a big gainer. Sometimes it doesn't. He tripped. The baseball playoff catches of the week. Bernie Williams of the Yankees. Brian Jordan of the Cardinals. Albert Bell of the Indians. Marquise Grissom of the Braves. And the fan in Texas. Well, it's time for us to go now, but let's get together again next week. Forward for a gain of about seven. They ran up inside of there. Chris Davis, six foot four, three hundred pound sophomore. Uh, some good size across this Oberlin offensive line. 300, 240, 210, 225, 205. Parker once again with the handoff inside. He picks up the first down, gain of about five. Once again, Michael Brown busted up the middle. First down for Oberlin. And they came into this game. I think their pass uh, or their rushing offense was last in the league. And this Brown kid looks like he uh, does a pretty nice job in there. Yeah, he, you know, I, I'm surprised that they aren't moving the ball. Matter of fact, they look a lot better and a lot more comfortable moving it on the ground. Parker inside handoff. That's number 88, John Laird. Tailback. Number 
close to the first down. Picked up about 10 yards there on first down. Ran out of bounds by 28, Bo Burgett. For Dennison, Justin Morseth, Mike Bronson, Sean Lugers, and Jeremy Patton. Across the defensive line, Bart Branham, Ryan Jones, Paxton Moore at linebacker slots. We have Lewis, Burgett, Winters, and Niedermeyer at the defensive back slot. Second and less than a yard for Oberlin. Parker with the option play, kicks it outside. That's 88 once again. John Laird, he stopped short. You know, you go from number 36, Michael Brown at 6'2", 220. Now you look at the pitch out to number 88, John Laird, who only is 5'7", 175. <laughs> Definitely a Mutt and Jeff backfield that yep. kicker. Got power up the middle, speed on the outside. Big defensive stand needed here by the Big Red. Third and less than a yard for the Yeoman at the midfield strike. Dennison with pressure in the backfield, and they're going to stop him. Look like 53, Paxton Moore, and 45, Ryan Jones with the blitz up the middle. Dennison got excellent penetration on that play. Just stopped it at the line of scrimmage. Great job by the Dennison defensive line. They took on the blockers, allowed the linebackers to get up inside, made the tackle. Once again, Oberlin goes into this short punt or maybe passing formation. They threw a long interception off of it. It's a quick kick. It's short. That's Parker. Dennison needs to get away from this ball. Just let it hit and roll. Rolls down to about the 26-yard line of the Big Red. Well, they were take over. And nice job up there. After they've given up almost 10 yards on first down, they stuffed them two times. A big defensive series. This, you know, this is one of these teams. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that they can spell. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hey, Big Red with an exclamation point. First down for the Big Red at the 26, 7.33 to go here in the first quarter. It's homecoming at Deeds Field. They take it up the gut once again. Looks like we've got about a pickup of about three. See who actually got to carry it. Micah Heilbrunn once again. Number Second and seven for the Big Red. Sun's starting to come out here, and what a beautiful day for football. About 45 degrees, sun's out, a little bit of a breeze. Schmidt up under the center. That's 34. Dan Hayes, far side, he's going to pick up short game. Pick up of about two, it's going to bring up Let's say third and five. 38 Ben Fortcamp comes in with the play. He'll be at one of the wide outs along with Garnett. Would appear to be a passing play, Craig, uh, although it might be a good time for Schmidt on a rollout here. Mallet at tight end. There's that rollout play. Nice call by my partner here. They ran that earlier in the game, picked up good yardage. They run the same play here. Schmidt goes around the far side, picks up a big first down. And once again, the Denison offense is moving the ball. They really need this to end up in some points. They've got to get some points on the board. They can't continue to move it and just keep coming up empty. And they have had trouble in what they call the red zone this year, down inside the 20. They haven't gotten that far yet today, but uh, they've moved the ball nice on offense. Need to continue here as Schmidt, a little counter play. Up inside to Hobbin. Nice pickup, pickup of about four or five yards on that play. Bring up, looks, bring up about a second and six. Dennison Big Red moving up near the midfield stripe. They've already been in Oberlin territory twice, turned it over once on an interception, second time on downs. Schmidt with a handoff to Clark. To the far side. It's going to be stopped with a short gain, give him a gain of about two. That's going to bring up third and four. And today it seems like this has been uh, the big red. This has been their trouble spot, that third down situation. They've tried to throw it a couple times. I uh, haven't been able to complete it for the first down. He's when he's When he's thrown the ball, he's been high. He's been long and high with it. I think he just needs to settle down, settle down, get the ball down, get his confidence back, and, and everything will be all right. Garnett and Mallet to the near side. Schmidt with the toss to Hovren. 
He gets hit in the backfield. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage in that particular play. Excellent penetration out there by number 25. That's Gilbert Sands. A strong safety. Yeah. And the Big Red will probably, that's a punting situation for the Big Red. With 4.43 remaining in the first quarter. Be the first punt of the Big Red. 38 Ben Fortcamp is the punter. Good snap. Fort Camp hits and rolls, going to go roll dead about the 25 yard line of Oberlin. And as the teams exchange, we'll take this Cox Cable timeout. Going to make this dinner extra special. Hello there, Jay. Can I help you? I'll take three pounds of shrimp and two pounds of oysters. I'll make my own bread using Bob's Red Mill flour. A wonderful salad. And for dessert, hmm, there's haagen ice cream, Lent chocolates, gourmet coffees, balsam cookies, Pepperidge Farm cakes and cookies. Ross's Granville IGA is known for their service and variety. Shop us just once and we'll guarantee you'll be back. Ross's IGA, just off Route 16, Granville. Back at Deeds Field, Cox Cable. Oberlin Denison, 0 0. Oberlin taking over on their 25, and it's straight up the gut. That's 36, Michael Brown. Tackled up inside by look like number 80, Mike Bronson. 6'2, 235 pound junior defensive tackle. Pickup of about two. Get a good look at number 76, the offensive line for Oberlin we mentioned, 6'4", 300 pounds. Parker under center. Ball carrier is number 32, new tailback in there, Brian Salter for the Yeoman. Salter comes in in place of John Laird, who ran the ball quite a few times on the last series. He's called by number 45, Ryan Jones. Tackled up inside of there by Ryan Jones, an inside linebacker. Third and about three for the Yeoman. And we've seen them uh, run some, <laughs> some different things on third down. They've tried to throw it, they've tried to run it, and run the option, so. Denison's been more inclined to kind of blitz on this type of series, send everybody into the gaps. Parker straight back, he's looking deep. It's caught by number 89. He could go all the way. He's tackled down at the one by 28. That's Bo Burgett. He saved a touchdown, it looks like. Anthony Johnson will take a look at this. This is just a fly. He just puts the ball up and lets Johnson run under it. He receives the ball on the 40, and really nobody lays a hand on him until they get to the 10, and he's down to the one. I'll tell you, that ball is right up against the goal line. Touchdown saving tackle by Burgett. As the Oberlin offense. We've got a flag down Frank on Frank mentioned play, play, but I'm not sure. They haven't moved the chain, so I'm not sure what this. I don't know if it was a, could have been a, fa yeah, it's going to be a face mask on the tackle. It was a first down. I don't know if they can move it half the distance to the goal. It'll be in the end zone. <laughs> that, that looked like that pass play was good for about 64 yards. First down inside the one for the Yeoman as they look to take an early lead here on homecoming day against the Denison Big Red. Parker with the handoff to Brown. He goes over the big tackle on the left side and he's in for six points. So Frank, the big play, 64 yard pass play, put the Yeoman in uh, position to score. And they capitalize on it. Again, it's not the kind of start Coach Wentworth was looking for. You know, we talked in the pregame about the Oberlin offense, Felix Brooks Church, the big receiver that's leading the league in catches. Uh, they shut him down. They haven't shut the other guys down. They let Johnson get away. There's a kick. It's up. It's good. And with that, with 244 to play in the first quarter, the Oberlin Yeoman take a 7-0 lead over Denison. We'll take this timeout for Cox Cable Messages.
Duchess shops. Quality, variety, value. And you don't pay extra for convenience. We're back at Deeds Field. Denison University, Granville, Ohio. And the Oberlin Yeoman, as you see on the, the TV there, jump out to an early lead. Big pass play. And then the one-yard run by 36, Michael Brown has given the Yeoman an early lead, and Frank and I have been talking in the breaks. You know, you have a team that's lost 35 in a row. The longer you let them in here playing the game, the tougher they're going to be. Well, I'll tell you what, they were pretty darn excited when they came off the field leading 7 to nothing. Kickoff goes out of bounds. Big Red will get the ball at their own 35-yard line, and their offense really has not had that bad a field position today. They've moved it well, uh, just can't capitalize at the other end, and we'll see what type of adjustments Coach Wentworth and his staff are making while the Denison defense is on the sidelines. Craig, I think this is a very, very critical offensive series coming up for Denison. They really need to do something. They, like I say, they moved the ball in spurts, but yet they haven't been able to capitalize on it, but they need to come up with some points here. Schmidt under center, Garnett wide to one side. It's a handoff to Clark. He tries the right side, cuts it back up in. He's still on his feet as he crosses the 40 to about the 42. Good tough running up there by Clark, six foot one, 200 pound senior. As he and Micah Heilbrunn are in the backfield today, see 47, Seth Hyman, he's carrying in the plays. Diston, Baskin, Zimmerman, Colley, and Polskamp up front. Mallet at tight end, Garnett out wide with 47, Hyman. Mallet in the wing position. Schmidt with a snap, quick pass outside. Okay, we, I think 80, we should have us a point there. That's 87, Darren McCord, and nobody's going to catch him. So the Big Red with a big play of their own. Answers with a play of 60 yards on that completion. 60-yard touchdown, catch and run. Schmidt, Take a look 87, at it. Darren McCord. This comes off of close to being lateral. He catches the ball on inside the 40. Nobody's going to catch him. He's good for the touchdown. I don't know who the Denison track coach is, but I think I'd be recruiting that guy right there. Plenty of speed. See number 10, Terry Majin. He comes in to try the extra point, try to tie this game up at seven apiece. There's a snap, and it's good. No, they say it's no good. Wide to the left. So the big red trail here, seven to six. Big, big pass play, Frank. Got him back in the game. Perfect for any game, Domino's has the perfect play. Choose from three delicious crusts. There's classic hand toss, crunchy thin crust, or go deep with thick ultimate deep dish. So make the call and have it all. Call now and you can enjoy a delicious Domino's pizza during the game. And why not add some of Domino's spicy buffalo wings or steaming hot breadsticks? Granville, Ohio. You see the score, Oberlin seven, Denison six. Denison with a mixed extra point. I'd like to mention our director today, John Hall, on camera, Paul Casty, and Steve Hall. Oh yes, and we do have to mention that John's wife, Diane, is uh, also helping him out here today. I'd like to thank her. And there's a kick from Majin. Comes down around the 10. It's picked up out there by number 26. He's got a That's hole. Jabari Spruill. And he's got some speed. He's down the sideline. He's going to get run out of bounds. That's about the 25, 20s. Make that about the 28. And all of a sudden, Frank, this game's turned into a bunch of big plays. 
Let's take a look at it. He has trouble fielding this ball. Fumbles around with it, picks it up at the 10, comes to the center field, has a big hole here, comes through. Now all he has to do is beat the kicker. He does that. But all of a sudden, number 23, I believe it was, came across and knocked him out of bounds. I think that was 28, Bo Burgett, defensive back for the Big Red. And once again, Overland's in great field position. There's Brown up the middle. Short gain, tackled in there by 45. That's inside linebacker Ryan Jones. This Big Red defense needs to step it up. We've had some big plays here, 60-yard run, or a pass play that almost was a touchdown for Oberlin. Big Red come back with a 60-yard touchdown of their own. Now the big kickoff, kickoff return. As we approach the one-minute mark here in the first quarter, so we're finishing with a flourish here yeah. in the first quarter. Went kind of slow there for about the first 12 minutes. Now the last three's been pretty exciting. Here's Parker, he's up under center. A little draw play in there to 32. That's Brian Salter. He's the backup tailback. Nice defensive play by the linebacker, number 53, Paxton Moore. He's a 5'10", 215-pound freshman. Watch him come back here. Gets into the backfield, makes a nice tackle, brings him down for a loss. The game we did earlier in the year, we called out Paxton Moore's name quite a bit. He's a 5'10", 215-pound freshman. He's teamed inside with Ryan Jones, and they do a real nice job with linebackers. Third and eight for the Yeoman. Brooks, Church, and Johnson flank out here to the right. Parker straight back. He just slings another one. That was out intended for number 16. <laughs> There's nothing Gerald fancy. Blankson. There's nothing fancy with these pass patterns they're running. No, he just, <laughs> just throws it up in the air and lets them run under it. Three steps and he's heaving it. They like that fly pattern down the near side. They must feel they have an advantage speed wise against the Denison defensive backs. We're in four down territory, fourth down and nine for Oberlin. My guess is we can expect the Big Red to come at them with everything on this particular play. They've been pretty successful. Looks like we're going to have a timeout by Oberlin. And while we have a timeout on the field, we'll throw it back in the truck to John Hall for these Cox Cable messages. All presidential candidates are predicting a prosperous economy. But did you know your prediction of the next president could earn you a half percent more on a First Federal Savings CD? With us is Jim Delner, Vice President of First Federal Savings. Jim, tell us about your election CD. That's right, Sharon. When our customer opens a new 18-month CD, we give them a ballot to predict the winner of November's election. If their prediction is right, their rate goes up by a full half percent for the remaining term. That sounds like good news for all Americans. We're back at Denison University. As you look into the huddle of the Denison defense, they get instructions for this fourth down play against Oberlin, the Big Red. Need a stop here. Get the ball back to that Denison offense, which has moved the ball well today. Had the one big play for a touchdown as Oberlin is down there knocking on the door after the big kickoff return. Again, I think this is one of those kind of key plays is for the psyche of your defense in this particular case. Looks like Oberlin has decided they're going to try a field goal. Now they do have the wind at his back. That looks like number 15, Sam Kratznall. Parker will be the holder. There's the snap. It's blocked. Parker picks it up. Now he's going to throw it to Brown. He's tackled short of the first down. The heads up play. <laughs> that was a great play. I'll tell you, he might. It's going to be real close. Uh, I think he is short, just looking at it from our angle. But I'll tell you what, that was a heads up play by the 14 there, the quarterback, James Parker. And when I saw him throw the ball to Michael Brown, I'm looking to see if there's anybody downfield. There wasn't. Uh, probably lucky in Dennis' part, that thing didn't go for a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, their defense was heads up too, because after the block, sometimes you lit up for just a little bit. They're going to bring the chains in. I believe he's going to be just a little bit short, but boy, what a turn of events that would have been. Uh, and it is short by half a yard. It's a nice job in there by the Denison defense. They block the field goal, and even though Oberlin picks it up and makes a nice play out of it, they have the presence of mind to make the tackle. 
and they will take over at their own 19. 13 seconds to go here in the first quarter, and that might be the break uh, the Big Red have been looking for here today defensive-wise. We've certainly seen some exciting plays here in this first quarter of play. All the last three minutes have been great. Schmidt under center. He fakes a handoff. He's going up top. There's Mallet, 88. He's tackled out there on the far side by number 26. That's Jabari Spruill. And that's going to bring the close of the first quarter. Overland leading 7-6. to six. Big Red with the football looking to drive it down and put some more points on the board. We'll take this Cox Cable timeout. I'm glad that we have a firm like Henderson, Venata, and Johnston in our town. They are very courteous, helpful, and understanding, especially Roy Venata and Charles Johnston. The new funeral home is just beautiful. All our family and friends were impressed with the facilities and personnel. We love everyone there. At Henderson, Venata, and Johnston, quality is basic. Henderson, Venata, and Johnston Funeral Service. One staff, two locations, three generations. Welcome back for second quarter action. Denison Big Red homecoming. They trail seven to six, but it's their football. Second and about two from their own 27 yard line. Schmidt with the handoff, big hole up the middle. That's Heilbrunn. If he gets a block, he could go all the way. Looks like maybe a face mask call. I, I think he did reach up, for, certainly on an inadvertent, but a, grabbed the face mask nonetheless. Like 25, Gilbert Sands tried to shove him out of bounds, grab the face mask. Take a look at it. He just comes up in the line off tackle, finds a nice hole, breaks it to the outside, and it's, it's off to the races. You saw the face mask right there just prior to going out of bounds. It's going to go against Dennison. Evidently, Heilbrunn, when he reached back there to uh, stiff arm the defender, he got a hold of the face mask. I don't know if we can... Uh, if John has on on replay one more time, we might be able to pick that up. Here it is, see if you can pick this up, folks. There's Heilbrunn, now watch him. He's gonna reach back with his left hand right there to try to ward off the defender and got a hold of the face mask. Kind of unusual for an offensive player to have a face masking penalty, but it does happen. Anyway, the Big Red still with a nice gain there at the 48 of Oberlin. First down from there. They could have been down to 33, 15-yard penalty set them back. Beautiful hole. Schmidt, hands off to 34. That's Hayes off the left side. He looks like he picks up about five, bringing up a second down and five. Tackled out there by 53, Terry Halter. And it seems like the Big Red uh, offensive line is starting to establish themselves a little, a little bit. They're coming off the ball real good, starting to open up some holes for the Denison running game. And the Oberlin defensive line is not getting any penetration whatsoever. Little trap play. That's Clark. He hits it off the left side. He's going to be real close to first down. So it might be close enough for a measurement. Saw 61, Jeremy Dunham, the guard. He pulled out on a trap play. Made a nice block. Clark picks up the first down. Big Red are now down to the 38-yard line. Really be nice to see them go on a time-consuming uh, four or five-minute 10-play drive here. Give that defense a little bit of a break. Schmidt with a handoff. That's Hayes. He cuts it up over the left side. Nice game. They're picking it up at about five yard chunks here. And that's what you want to do. You want to get good positive yardage on first down. That way you're not forced to throw on second and third down all the time. You can take a chance here, maybe run it again. Coach Wentworth and his staff mixing up the play calling here today. Clark and Heilbrunn in the backfield. Schmidt, quarterback, got Mallet to the near side, Garnett to the far side. Schmidt rolls out. He's thrown deep. That's Garnett. And it's knocked down. A little underthrown. He had a step on the receiver, but Schmidt was under pressure. And I basically almost had to throw that one off his back foot. Take a look at this here on replay. Schmidt drops back, but you see the pressure coming in from number 23. Just underthrows it a little bit. 
Yeah, not only did he throw it going backwards, but the guy was right in front of him. He had to throw it a little higher, which made it come up a little short also. So anyway, third and five for the big red. Mallet and Garnett to the near side. It's a draw play, 32, up the gut. That's Justin Fry. Number 32, Justin Fry, the ball carrier for the big red. Runs good enough for a big red first down. Take a look at this. Bringing in fresh legs. He comes in on the draw play. Picks up about 10. Good block out there by Hayes, his running mate in the backfield. Nice little draw play. Good call. Coach Wentworth, first down big red as they are now down to the 21 yard line. Schmidt with the toss. It's to Hybron. He gets the corner. He's run out of bounds. Looks like he's going to pick up about four or five. Five yards seems to be the magic number right now. Get a good look at Hybron. He's carried the ball quite a few times today as the big red go outside after running it up inside the tackles four or five consecutive plays. Well, again, it's keeping that defensive front seven honest. They can't, so they can't stack it inside the ends on you. Garnett and Mallet wide left. Here's the touchdown, man. That's 87. He breaks a tackle. He's down inside the 10. Darren McCord. Okay, I think he's in, they're going to mark that at about the six. Should be another first down for the big red. You see Schmidt just stands up, two-step drop, hits McCord. He makes a nice cut back inside, picks up about another five yards. Big red are down here knocking on the door. They really need to punch this one in. Clark and Hybron in the backfield. Schmidt on the roll. He gets a good block out there, and he's touchdown. in for a touchdown. Great block out there by Chris Clark. We have it on replay. Play you should be able to see. 41 with the block. Again, like you say, nice block, and it's an excellent run by Schmidt. Here we go. Take a look at this. Hybron puts the block, and Schmidt just dies and reaches the ball across the end. The end zone prior to going out of bounds. Well, you now Keith Schmidt, he's from North, right here in North Ohio, six foot one, 200 pound sophomore. He's got good size, he's got good strength, and that allowed him to carry that ball on in. Got a block out there by Clark. Clark actually pancaked his guy on the back. Terry Majin in the hold once again. Looks like McNally's the holder. Kicks up, and it's good. And the big red jump out on top here for the first time today. 13 to seven. And we'll be back with the Denison kickoff after this Cox Cable timeout. Denison University, Craig White along with Frank McManus. Beautiful day for football. And it's looking even better now as the Big Red jump out on top 13 to seven. Terry Magan back to kick. Good high kick. Come up short, taking on about the 18. That's nice. 89. Anthony Johnson, he broke one big play earlier in the Big Red kickoff team. Got their act together after their last kickoff as they hold Oberlin down inside the 25. It's a high, short kick. Johnson takes it, like I say, on about the 18, starts to go to his right, but he gets, breaks through by number 45, which is Ryan Jones, and make a nice tackle. Great special teams play there by the Big Red. See if that carries through their defensive play. First down for the Yeoman. At the 23, Parker up under center. He's going straight back. He wings it out here to the near side. That's number 17, Felix Brooks Church, 6'4", 200-pound sophomore. 14, James Comes into the game leading 
pickup of about six on that particular play. Felix Brooks Church leading the NCAC conference in receiving. Six catches per game. He and Steve Garnett, the leading receivers in the league. And Dennison has done a great job uh, almost midway through the second quarter before uh, Brooks Church gets his first catch. Parker with the toss. Outside to 32, Which that's Brian Salter. He takes it for the first down. Pick up, pick up of about five, I think, for Salter. And this uh, Oakland team, they have a nice mix in the backfield. They got Brown, a big power back, running up inside. Then they got Laird, and they also bring in Salter, a little scat back uh, for their outside game. First down at the 34 for the Yeoman. Parker up under center, it's a draw play. Nice job in there by number 24. That's Jeremy Patton, 6'2", 205 pound junior defensive end. Take a look at it, he kind of comes through here, base almost untouched, comes off the block. Just makes a nice tackle for a loss of about five. That's just great defensive end play right there. Patton closed down inside. Read the play going away from him. Kind of a slow developing play. Loss of about five yards. I tell you, it, you can notice a big difference in the Denison defense based on what they do on first downs. If they've been able to hold them or throw them back, they've generally performed pretty well. It's only when Oberlin's gotten some positive yardage on that first down. Looks like we might have a delay of game penalty as the time or play clock expires. That's what it's going to be. Denison defensive line now consisting of Patton, 93 John Hill, 80 Mike Bronson, 82 Justin Morseth, another Newark High School product. At Ohio Wesson, they have Wittenberg with 20. Second and 20. Need to watch Parker here. He likes to just drop back and wing the ball yes. on the fly pattern down the sides. He's thrown into the wind this quarter. There's the out pattern to Johnson. Good defensive play out there. 92 Lugers. Tell you, a lot of red shirts pursuing on that play. And that's what you need when you have a, a, a shifty and quick runner like that. You just don't really want to give that individual any room to make any moves and get some going downfield. And nice play. Yep, and it's a team pursuit. Everybody has to take the correct angle, make sure there aren't any gaps or lanes for him to cut back in. See 43, Scott Winters checks in a defensive back. Big red defense trying to get some extra defensive backs in there. Third and about 18 for Oberlin. Parker back, he's just winging it out here and it's gonna be incomplete. Should be yep. a punt, punting situation for the Yeoman. Almost looked like he was just trying to get rid of that one. Coverage out there by number seven, Lavert Pickens. You don't have many good third and 18 plays in your playbook. No. No. Nice job by the Denison defense. See number 87, Darren McCord. Big touchdown man earlier in the game. Made a nice play down here on the next drive. It helps out the touchdown. Parker with the kick. It's shortened to the right. Big Red need to get away from it. Just let it hit and roll. They're going to have great field position at about the 47, 48 yard line. You know, they. They always have that short punt formation. I'm a little bit amazed that he's not much farther back than a quarterback he is off of a uh, shotgun formation. And what's so scary about that, though, Frank, is he is their quarterback, so that gives them a lot of options. Uh, you never know quite sure whether they're going to pass it or run it or punt it. First down for the Big Red, 9.32 to go here in the first half. Garnett and Hyman out wide to the right. It's a handoff inside. Looked like 23, Heilbrunn. He's going to pick up about two. Number 23, Micah Heilbrunn, the ball here for the Big Red. Stop on the play by number 23, Frank Cotter. 41, Clark brings in the play. Get a good look at the Denison coaching staff along the sidelines. Denison out around the 50, second and eight. Schmidt straight back, fakes the draw play. He's looking deep. 
He's got Garnett all oh, just off his fingertips out here on the near sideline. Yeah, fortunately that ball was overthrown and Garnett was out of bounds as it passed over him. Nice effort by the wide receiver. Again, I think that there's just enough wind down there that it's obviously affecting both of these quarterbacks. Now Schmidt's got the wind to his back. Yep, definitely have to adjust for the win. Third and eight. Big Red Schmidt straight back. It's a draw play. Worked on the last drive. It's going to work here as number 32, Justin Fry, once again, picks up the first down. Nice play by Denison. Again, as you mentioned before, they ran that same draw play, picked up 10 yards. We're going to take a look at it. Same play, same result. 10 yard gain and a first down. Oberlin Yeoman definitely looking past Big Red. Offense runs a draw play. First down inside the 40. Schmidt with the hand off to Clark off the right side. Big gainer. He's still on his feet. He almost picks up another 10 yards. More than 10 yards, really. Pick up of about 12, and that'll be another first down for the Big Red of Denison. Nice job in there as Poles Camp, Colley, Zimmerman, Baskin, and Diston. They're starting to make some holes up inside in the big red running game starting to come to life here into the first quarter here in the second quarter. Another first down, they're down at the 27. 8.14 to go first half, it's a toss. That's Fry, 32. It's gonna be good for a pickup of about two. Bring up a second down and eight for the big red. 34, Dan Hayes brings in the play. Keith Schmidt. Wind is picking up here at Deeds Field. Bobby Mallett still a tight end. Garnett, he's out wide left, along with 47 Hyman, 38. Fort Camp to the near side. It's a handoff up inside to Hayes. He lost his footing as he came up to about the 20 yard line. He'll be down just short of the 20 for pickup of about five. Once again, though, the Denison offensive line getting a nice hole up inside there. Coach Wentworth, he's really mixing in these backs, keeping some I, fresh, quick legs in there. They're that, really. Uh, that's what I was noticing, really spreading the carries around the various, about five backs, getting a pretty equal amount of number of carries. Garnett and Mallet spread wide, four camp to the near side. It's a handoff to Hybron. He's going to drag the defenders for two, maybe three more yards. Looks like the Big Red are going to be about three yards short. Uh, they're well within Terry Majin's kicking range. It will be a first down. And we talked a minute ago, that's what we wanted to see, that Big Red uh, offense with a time-consuming drive. I think Oberlin's calling for another timeout with 6.57 here to go in the first half. And why Oberlin takes their second time out of the half, we'll throw it back into the truck for these messages. It's hard to imagine anyone who hits harder than Mike Tyson. For that reason, he is the most feared boxer in the world. Who would want to get in the ring with him? Who would want to get their head blasted? Or their stomachs smashed. Or their ribs bashed. He comes at you with either hand. It doesn't matter. Who wouldn't be afraid to fight him? Finally, Tyson versus Holyfield. Deeds Field, you see Coach Wentworth talking it with his sophomore quarterback, Keith Schmid from Newark, Ohio. And the Big Red offense, Frank, really starting to move the ball. They've moved it well, Dave. Now they're starting to score. Let me put it that way. That's right. And, you know, there's no question here the offensive line from tackle to tackle is really beginning to take charge here. Pushing the line, the defensive line of Oberlin back, opening up some holes. 
in the, the, the various backs that Coach Wentworth has put in there and been able to capitalize. Schmidt under center. It's a quick hitter up to gut. Looks like 32. That's Justin Fry. Inside and once, the 10 to the 6. And once again, that offensive line, you can just feel their confidence really starting to come around as this big red running game. Is, now, is, and then I see the big backs, once they're getting into the secondary, are able to push the secondary uh, people over and carry them for additional yardage. Uh, just a all good, nice offensive drive here by the big red. Schmidt under center, second and short to hand off to Clark off the right side. He's got a chance to go in. He's not going to make it. He's going to be stopped just short inside the one. As the big senior, excuse me, big uh, senior tried to stretch out and get it in there. Take another look at this play. He just runs off the left side. Again, finds the hole, carries a defender. Just wasn't quite long enough to reach it across the goal line. First down at the one. Big Red looking to punch it in. There's 32. That's Justin Fry. Touchdown. He's in for a touchdown for the Big Red. 6.06 of the se second quarter, and the Big Red now have 19 points on the board. Send in kicker Terry Majin, 5'11", 165-pound senior. He will try to put the 20th point on the board here for the Big Red as they have come back in a big, big way after falling behind 7 to zip. They're looking to push their lead to 13. There's a snap to hold the kick. And it's good. And it's good. And with that extra point, the Big Red go ahead. Up, oh, flag on the field. Roughing the kicker against Oberlin, so that, that penalty will be taken on the kickoff. So the Big Red will have a decision to make when they come back, whether to try, kick it and try to pin them deep or maybe try an onside kick after they had the 15 yards uh, roughing the kicker penalty, or it might be a five-yarder. We'll stay right here until we find out what the Big Red are going to do, whether they're going to take the extra point and kick off or try maybe try to go for two. Get a good look uh, at the homecoming crowd here. Nice crowd here in Granville. Again, on a beautiful fall afternoon. Temperatures probably about in the upper 40s right now. Wind chill. I don't know what the <laughs> wind chill is, though. Anyway. Uh, I don't even want to use that term. <laughs> Hear enough of that in the months to come. Hi, I'm Jim Young. And I'm Donna Alvarado. And we invite you to join us in this special five-part series focusing on education in Licking County. It's going to be shown every Tuesday at 7.30 on Cable 5. Join us, please. Back in Granville, Ohio, where the Big Red have jumped out to 20-7 to lead. Kicking off from the 40-yard line on the five-yard penalty, roughing the kicker on the extra point. That's 20, 25, excuse me, 26, Jabari Sproul, as Majin's kick carried almost down to the goal line. Takes it on about the one, brings it out to the 20, so it'll be first down and 10 for Oberlin at the 20-yard line. 80 yards away with six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Once again, the Big Red defense will be called upon to come in and stop this Oberlin offense. They've done a good job since that scoring drive, which really was a practice. You might as well say it was a one big play drive. They really didn't uh, make them earn it, let me say. And uh, the defense needs to step it up here so the Big Red can uh, maybe get some more points on the board for offense before halftime. Number 32, Salter on the carry. Looks like he'd bring it out to about the 25 yard line for a pickup of five. Oberlin on that play went with their trips formation where they spread three wide receivers to one side of the field, trying to spread out that defense. Then they run it up the gut. You Second. Know, you see a, a real difference in this Oberlin offense going into the wind. Yeah. 
Second and six, Parker up under center, trips to the far side. It's a toss back here to the near side to Salter. Nice cutback by the running back. Brings it out to about 29, where it'll bring up third and short. Nice job in there by 45, Ryan Jones, 51, Mike Lawrence in there also. Third and about two. CF Oberlin, if they don't give it to that big running back of theirs, Mike Brown, 6'2", 220. So he's the only back. It trips out to the right, though. They're going to put it up. Parker, he wings it again. Almost but, picked off by number one, Marciano Lewis. I think he was putting up six points when he got in front of that. Frank actually looked to me like he just missed time to jump just a little bit. If he did, his timing was off just a split second, he might have had that. Anyway, it's going to be a punting situation, fourth and two for Oberlin. Dennison should come out of this with excellent field position, looking to point, put some more points on the board here before halftime. 4.40 to go, second quarter. Parker back to punt. Excuse me, that's 17. That's Felix Brook Church. He punts this time out of that short formation. The ball's going to roll down to about the 39-yard line. I don't know if uh, Parker, there's something wrong with him, but he did not punt that time. They like that short punt formation. It, I'm amazed. I'm not sure what the purpose of it is, other than maybe the center can't get it any further back. <laughs> anyway, the Big Red take over at their own 39, looking to tack on six more points before halftime. 4.31 to go, second quarter. Mallet and Hy or excuse me, Garnett and Hyman out here to the near side. Schmidt under the center. He's straight back. Rolling near side. He oh, comeback pattern to Hyman. Just could not connect. Number five, missed pass attempt to number 47. Seth Hyman, incomplete. The Big Red, after many successful running plays, decided to come out throwing on first down. Yeah. Maybe they feel they can pick up 10 on this draw play about any time they need it, huh? They second, have the last two times they yeah. ran it. Second 10, looks like Howe running. And there's Fry, and there is the draw play. Oh, he stumbles. I don't think anybody even touched nah, him he, there. He tripped as he went over the 40-yard marker, I think, there and came down with a pickup of about five. Make that you know, five yards. Unfortunate turn of events for the Big Red because it looked like Fry had plenty of running room out here to the near side. Just got tripped up a little bit on that draw play that he's run several times today. Garnett to the near side, Mallet in the slot. That's going to cost the Big Red five. It's number 88. That'll change the play calling. Bobby Mallet, 6'4", 225-pound senior, takes a big step forward before the ball was snapped. And now it's going to bring up a third and 10 instead of third and five. And that, like you mentioned, that is going to change the play call. Bring in number 87, Darren McCord, with the new play. Look for either Garnett or McCord. McCord with a couple big catches here today. Garnett, the leading receiver. Schmidt straight back. He's got high run. He gets a block. He get a first down. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be a first down for the Big Red. Nice pickup. Nice, nice play, gets a nice block by number 84, Steve Garnett, allowing him to pick up the necessary yards for the first down, pick up about 12. And what really made that play go was the amount of time Schmidt had to pass. Offensive line doing an excellent job. Keith Schmidt, all kinds of time picked up. That was maybe his third receiver as Hybron came out of the backfield. First time we've seen that play today, and the Big Red get a first down inside the 50. I think that penalty will go against Oberlin, so they've got a free one here if they need it. But he's going to pick up, 41's going to pick up about 10 yards in the first down. Nice run by Chris Clark. Nice job by Clark as he ran the sweep play to the left side. After Oberlin jumped offside, you see the official with the call. And the Big Red will decline this penalty. It'll either be second and short or a first down for him, depending on where the spot is, as they move inside the 40 of Oberlin. 3.30 to go here, first half. Dennis, Dennison leading 20 to seven. I continue to be impressed with the way they spread the, the offense around over about four different running backs. 
not really relying on anyone to, to, to carry the load. And really all four of them are doing a nice job. Certainly not to be overlooked as the offensive line. Fry, Hayes, Clark, and Heilbrunn with the majority of the carries here today. Dennis and Big Red with the play fake up inside. Schmidt's going deep for 47. That's Seth Hyman. He got turned around. He, he thought the ball was coming over the outside shoulder, came on the inside. He, was, he had double coverage to boot, so that would have been a tough play to make. The Big Red trying to go for all six points there on one play. Bring up third and one at the 38 of Oberlin. 3.14 to go, second quarter. Big Red probably pounded up the gut here, pick up a first down, get four more plays. There's Fry, and it looks like he's going to pick up the first down, but not by much. That's a good defensive stop there by Oberlin, but again, he really didn't need much. I think his momentum will give him the first down, although I think we're going to get a measurement. Big Red went off that offensive right side behind Baskin and Diston. Both of them 6'3", 250 juniors. Looks like they're going to measure. That's real close. It's kind of hard to tell, Frank. They have those the sideline markers back behind <laughs> the about three yards back from the field. So it's going to be a couple inches short. Interesting call here for Coach Wentworth. I think they kind of feel they can get it, but if they don't, they're going to give Oberlin excellent field position with a little over three minutes to go. Again, I think Schmidt is a pretty decent runner. I'd be surprised if they just didn't quarterback sneak it, pick it up, and get a fresh set of downs and go. Clark and Hybron in behind Schmidt, and they sneak it. Excellent call. He picked up about three on that. Keith Schmidt, 6'1", 200-pound sophomore. And the Big Red will get a fresh set of downs as we are going to go underneath the three-minute mark. Garnett and Mallet will come far, come near side. Fort Camp to the far side. Schmidt straight back. He's looking. Looks like Mallet's open over the, the middle. And he's going to go down. 52. Luke Richter. Defensive end for Oberlin, six foot, 200 pound freshman coming in. Schmidt never saw him, never felt him until he got hit. And really, uh, I think that's the first time that Keith has been sacked today. Yeah. Um, had the one, one time he got pressured pretty good, but other than that, the offensive line has done a great job. Schmidt up under center, it's second and long for the Big Red. There's a drive play to Hybron. He, he breaks some tackles up the middle. He's going to pick up about 10 yards. Nice, nice run by Halbern. Big Red have had just a huge amount of success Take a look on this at draw it. play. You see he basically hit just as he passes the line of screen, breaks the tackle, breaks the second tackle, carries the tackle for a pickup of 10. Bringing up about third and seven here for the Big Red. Nice job by Halbern. Schmidt under center, Mallet and Garnett out near side. He's looking this way, Schmidt over the middle. Not, not sure who touched it. I believe one of the linebackers might have been number 53, Terry Halder, reached up and deflected that ball. Trying to go to Mallet over the middle, uh, the play that Schmidt was sacked on. I was uh, mentioned Mallet looked like he was open over the middle. They tried to go back to it. Oberlin smelled that one out. Fourth down and seven, 142 to go here in the first half. Be interesting to see what they call here. Well, they could call that draw. It's been good for about 10 plays, or about 10 yards to play. And there it is. That's a little curl pattern to Mallet. They ran it again, only this time he didn't take it over the middle. He broke it right where he started, turned right back around. That's going to be a first down at the 20. Pickup of about 12. Take a look. Now it just comes across. Re goes up in the air, comes down with it. In, just in, outside the 20 yard line. Big red offense on the move. Schmidt straight back. There's Mallet once again on the other side, going to pick up a, another nice game. Can pick up of about six. I'm not and with that, Dennison, 115 to go here in the first half. They will spend their first time out, and we will take this time out.
We're back for the final, 115. Big Red are knocking on the door. They're down at the 15, second and five to go. Leading 20 to seven. Schmidt, straight back. Looking out here to the near side. It's well, caught by right, Garnett. He's gonna go in, I he's believe. He's gonna go in, touchdown. Nice play. You know, the defender, number 26, Jabari Spurl, made a nice hit, just bounced off of him. And of course, we talked earlier, Garnett, he's 6'4", 200 pound. Take a look at this. We got a penalty flag down. Here's the replay. Garnett takes it, just bounces off of him and just takes it into the end zone. 15 yard touchdown. Looks like it's a personal foul against Oberlin. So that might be uh, tacked on. Anyway, a touchdown stands 26 for the Big Red. You see their sidelines, they're a happy bunch. See if they'll go for two. If this is tacked on on the extra point, that put them down about the yard and a half stripe. You see the score, it's 26 to seven as we await Denison's extra point try. And they will go for the extra point. 52 Zimmerman, the center, he's the, sna he's the snapper. Sean McNally, he's the holder. Terry Majan is the kicker. Good snap, good placement. It's up and it's no, no good. good. Everything looked all right on that one. I'm not sure whether he just missed it. Terry's missed one to the left and now to the right. So we, as we await the Denison kickoff, you see the score, big red on top by 19. Whether you enjoy working with children, tomorrow's technology, or...